Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching the original solutions, any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 290. Please turn to it. Page number 290. Problem number 158 is what we are about to do. Let's see what they have to say. 158. In 158 they tell us in 158 they tell us that if Carmen if Carmen had 12 more tapes she would have twice as many as Rachel does. If she happened to have 12 more tapes she would end up having twice as many tapes as Rachel does. Well let's see what, the, what that means in terms of equation. If Carmen had 12 more tapes, so if number of tapes that Carmen has is C, if you use letter C to represent the number of tapes that Carmen has, then they tell us that if she ends up having 12 more than that, whatever the number of tapes that she has, if she ends up having 12 more than that, then this quantity is going to be two times the number of tapes that Rachel has, which we're going to use R to represent. R represents the number of tapes Rachel has. So this is the equation that they're telling us. Let's see what the, what the question is asking. They're simply asking us, is, is C less than R? Is C less than R? That's all. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward question. Let's see what they tell us. In the first statement, in the first statement they tell us that R ha Rachel has more than, more than five tapes. That's all they tell us. They tell us that the Rachel happens to have uh, tapes that are more than five in number. Well, let's plug in a couple of numbers and see what happens. Let's pretend, let's pretend that Rachel has ten tapes. If Rachel has ten tapes, then we know that Carmen, if Rachel has ten tapes, then we know that the number of tapes that Carmen has has to be two times r, two times r minus twelve. Two times r minus twelve. Let's put r here. So if Rachel happens to have ten tapes, that Carmen would have 2 times r, which is 2 times 10 minus 12, 2 times, two times 10 is 20, minus 12 is 10, or minus 12 is 8, 20 minus 12 is 8, and the question is, is c less than r? Is c less than r? Well, c turns out to be 8, and r, we pretend it to be 10, is, is 8 less than 10? The answer is yes, it is. But there's just one, one of infinite possibilities. There are infinite possibilities as to how many tapes the Rachel might end up having. All we know is that she has more than five tapes. Maybe she has 50 tapes. Maybe she has 50 million tapes. Let's just try a different number. Let's put in 20 for the hell of it. Let's just see 20 and see what happens. If Rachel happens to have 20 tapes, then Carmen would end up having 2 times 20 minus a 12. 2 times 20 is 40, 40 minus 12, 40 minus 10 would be 30, so it's 28. 28. The question is, is 28, is 28 C less than R, which we pretend to be 20? Is 28 less than 20? Well, in this, in this case, the answer is no. First the answer was yes, now the answer is no. We cannot give a definitive answer. We cannot give a definitive answer to the question. The question simply is, does Carmen have fewer tapes than Rachel does? Uh, Rachel, the answer to, to that question would be, who the hell knows? It all depends. It all depends. Simply knowing that Rachel has more than five tapes does not do the job. It's not sufficient data. That is not sufficient data. Statement one does not do the job. 
A, D, B, C, E. Statement one does not do the job. Now that we established that the first statement by itself is not sufficient, we know now answer cannot be A or D, it would have to be B, C or E. Let's look at second statement. In the second statement they tell us, we have to erase all of this thing. In the second statement they go on to tell us that Carmen has fewer than 12 tapes, all right. They go on to tell us that Carmen has fewer than 12 tapes. In other words, C is less than 12. C, we are told, is less than 12. Well, C is less than 12. Let's see what can, we know this is the equation they're dealing with, that 2R, 2R right here has to equal C plus 12 which means R has to equal C plus 12 over 2. What do you notice? What we should notice here immediately is that the top quantity, whatever it is, has to be an even number. Has to be an even number because we are dividing it by 2 and these being tapes has to be an integer. That's very important things. To, these kind of things are very important to pay attention to. If, we, if the nature of the question is such that we are talking about number of plants or number of cars in the parking lot or number of boys or girls in the classroom or number of teachers, the nature of these, uh, these uh, phenomena is such that they have to be integers. Very difficult to have a third of a child in the class. Do you understand? Very difficult to plant one seventh of a plant. They have to be integers. The top number must be even. Top number must be even, which means C the number of tapes that Carmen has, has to be even. Now we know it's fewer than 10. That tells us, this implies, this implies that C has to be, has to be 10, 8, 6, 4, or 2. We're going to try them out and see what happens. Let's try them out. Right, let's do it here. C has to be 10, 8, 6, 4, or 2. Or it could be zero also, I suppose. But then the whole, co whole the whole question would cease to exist. The whole thing would not make any sense at all. Carmen has 12 more tapes. Oh, she has 12 more tapes than... If she had 12 more tapes, she would end up having twice as many. Well, I suppose. Let's, let's, let's figure out what R is. I'm going to pick up speed here. So R is C plus 12. If C is 10, it's going to be 10 plus 12 over 2. It's 5 plus 6, which is 11. Question is, is C less than R? C is 10, R is 11. The answer is yes, it is less than, yes, it is less, C is less than R. What if C happens to be 8? Again, 8 plus 12 over 2 will end up with 4 plus 6, which is going to be 10. Is 8 less than 10? The answer again is yes. You can keep on going because we're dividing. Because here, this number is always six, and this is this is this keeps going down. This is this this quantity. We start out with we start out with five, and then four, and then three, and two. This will keep going down. And this guy, because of the fact that his uh, this thing is not going to be twice as much. This quantity has to be twice as much as that quantity because we're dividing it by two for them to be equal. Let alone being this being bigger than that, and it'll never be twice as much because of the fact that this number is going down. That number is 6, but this is going to be 5, 4, 3, it will always go down. So next one is going to be, next one is going to be 3 plus 6, which is going to be 3 plus, 3 plus 6, which is going to be 9, and again 9 is less than, the question is, is C, is C less than 9? The answer is yes again. It will always be yes. The next one is going to be 2 plus 6, which is 8, is 8 less than is, eight le is, is 4 less than 8? The answer is always yes. Answer will always be yes. Answer will never change. And we are almost there because we only have two more scenarios. The question here is, in this scenario, in this case, we are able to give a definitive answer. Is C less than R? C would have to be less than R. Yes, R answer to that question would be, yes, C has to be less than R. C must be less than R. Second statement enable us to give enable enables us to give a definitive answer. Therefore, second statement by itself does the job. The answer is the answer is I forgot what happened to the first statement. Was first statement enough or not? The first statement was not enough. Therefore, the answer is B. The, the first statement we found was not enough. So we had A D B C E, 
And because of the fact that we established that the first statement by itself was not enough, we knew the answer could not have been A or D. Now the second statement does the job and therefore the answer is B. Let's go to the next one, shall we? 159. Number 159. Let's see what we have there. Number 159. We are told that x is an integer is x is an integer x is a whole number question is is x times the absolute value of x less than 2 raised to x is x times is x times absolute value of x is x times absolute value of x less than 2 raised to x let's see what they tell us let's see what they tell us in the first statement they tell us that x is negative. They tell us that x is less than 0. x is negative, they tell us. x is negative. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. All we have to be able to do, all we have to be able to do is to answer this question. Is this quantity less than that quantity? Watch what happens. We know now x is negative. If x is negative, we have x times absolute value of x. Is that less than 2 raised to x? Or x we know is negative. Absolute value of a negative number, even if even if x is negative, the absolute value is going to be positive, which is what absolute value means. So the absolute value of x is going to be positive, regardless of whether x is negative or positive. Here it turns out to be negative, but it doesn't matter. The absolute value of x is going to be positive. So this quantity is positive. x we are told is negative. So negative times positive, the product of these two will be negative. What about this side? Here we have 2 raised to some negative number. It doesn't matter. It makes no difference. It makes no difference the fact that 2 is raised to some negative number. For example, we can have 2 raised to negative 3. But 2 raised to negative 3 is same as 1 over 2 raised to 3, which is same as 1 over 8, which is still a positive quantity. 2 raised to a negative number is still a positive quantity. Are we able to answer the question, is, is negative times a positive less than a positive? The answer to that question, of course, is yes, because negative times positive is negative, and negative quantity will always be less than some positive quantity. Negative quantity will always be less than a positive quantity. We are able to answer the question. The question was, is this quantity, is this product x times the absolute value of x, is the product of x and absolute value of x less than 2 raised to x? The answer is yes, it is less than s. Again, the point here is not that the answer is yes. That is not the point. That is not the bloody point. The point here is that we are able to give a definitive answer. It's just a coincidence that the answer turns out to be positive, affirmative, it does, but that was besides the point. That is not the point here. Do you understand? Even if the answer turned out to be no, this is not less than this, still it will do the job. It will, it will, be, it will be sufficient. It will suffice. Here, the first statement by itself is sufficient. First statement by itself does the job because it enables us to give a definite answer, a definitive answer. The answer is yes, it is less than, this product is less than 2 raised to x because 2 raised to x, even if x is negative, 2 raised to a negative quantity, 2 raised to a negative quantity, like here we saw here, 2 raised to a negative number, 2 raised to a negative number is still a positive quantity. It's just one over that quantity. That's, it's, that's it. It's just a fraction. It's a, it's a decimal. But it doesn't change the fact that it is positive. So no matter how tiny it may be, 2 raised to a negative, negative 1 million is going to be very close to 0, but still it is going to be a positive quantity, and that positive quantity will always going to be more than this product if this product is a negative product, which it is. First statement is enough. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we established that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now that the answer cannot be B, C, or E. It would have to be either A or D. Let's look at second statement. Let's look at second statement. In the second statement, well, there you go. In the second statement is also very obvious. Look, in the second statement, they go on to tell us that x is negative 10. Now, you don't have to make your life uh, miserable. You don't have to make your life complicated. You don't have to waste your time unnecessarily during the exam. We just did the work. We just did the work and we realized, and we realized that as long as x is negative, as long as x is negative, 
then this quantity is going to be negative, absolute value of x is going to be positive, and 2 raised to a negative number will be, will be positive, and therefore the product of these two will be negative, and negative will always be less than a positive quantity. Negative will always be less than a positive quantity. In other words, in other words, all we have to establish is the fact that x is a negative quantity, which it clearly is here. We don't actually have to do any, any work here. You don't have to sit there and plug in numbers and waste your time doing it all out. It's not necessary. They tell you clearly that x is a negative quantity. As long as x is negative, one more time, as long as x is negative, this x is going to be negative. The absolute value of x is going to be positive. Negative times positive is negative. And 2 raised to a negative power will still be positive. And therefore, the product is negative. Negative will always be less than a positive. Second statement also enables us to give a definitive answer. Is the product less than the 2 raised to x? The answer is yes, it is less than x. The answer to this question is D. Both of these statements by themselves do the job quite nicely. Now, just for learning purposes, it's not something we'll do in the real exam, but just for learning purposes, we could do it here. It is not, it is absolutely not necessary at all. We could do it here if you wanted to, which is x times absolute value of x. And here we have 2 raised to x. x is negative 10. So negative 10 times the absolute value of negative 10. Absolute value of negative 10 is going to be positive 10, which is a negative 100. And negative 100 is less than... 1 over 2 raised to 10. Because you see this is 2 raised to negative 10. 2 raised to negative 10 is 1 over 2 raised to 10. It is very close to 0, but it doesn't alter the fact that this is a positive quantity. 1 over 2 raised to 10 is a positive quantity. This is a negative quantity. We really doesn't, it really, we're not interested in what it is. We don't have to worry about what the actual value is. It is a positive quantity and therefore a positive quantity will always be greater than a negative quantity. Let's move on then. The very last question on the first column, number 160. Let's take care of that. Number 160. They tell us that n is a positive integer. n is a positive integer is b minus a at least twice the value of 3 raised to n minus 2 raised to n. In other words, what they're asking us this, in other words, what they're asking is, is b minus a at least twice as much, at least means it is either greater than or equal to. It is at minimum, at, at the very least, it is equal to this quantity or more than that. It doesn't say at most, at least. Uh, two times, two times, twice, you see twice the value of this quantity. That's what we are looking for. If we can somehow establish that, then we are home free. Let's see what they tell us in the first statement. In the first statement, they tell us that a is equal to a is equal to 2 raised to n plus 1, and b is equal to 3 raised to n plus 1. Listen, I just realized, I, I, it happened quite inadvertently, I did not do it on purpose. I just realized that I was using capital letters for a and b, and here I started using small letter. Don't make a fuss about it, okay? Okay, just, just chill. Do you understand? Let's find out what b minus a is. b minus a, here's our b. So b minus a is going to be 3 raised to n plus 1 minus 2 raised to n plus 1. Okay, let's see what they tell us. And that, of course, can be written as, that can be written as 3 times 3 raised to n minus 2 times 2 raised to n. And the question is, is this quantity, b minus a that is, is this greater than or equal to 2 times 3 raised to n minus 2 raised to n? That's the question. Let's erase that thing so we don't... Is this, is this true? That's what we're interested in. Is b minus a, which is this quantity right here, b minus a is this quantity right here, is this quantity greater than or equal to 2 times 
this quantity right here, 3 raised to n minus 2 raised to n. Wasn't that the question? Of course. Let's open this parenthesis here. 2 times 3 raised to n minus 2 times 2 raised to n. And here we have negative 2 times 2 raised to n. 3 times 3 raised to n. Okay. I'm going to erase this part now. We don't need this b minus a part. What do we see? We see, we see, we see 2 times 2 raised to n here. We see 2, rest, two times 2 raised to n here. We can get rid of that. And here we have 3 times this quantity and here we have 2 times this quantity. Which means we can divide both quantity by 3 raised to n. I don't know if I should continue here. Is it necessary or, or, or we can... Uh, we, are, we are done. It's the three, times, 3 times this quantity is going to be more than 2 times this quantity. Or we can divide both, both sides. 3 raised to 3 raised to n is it greater than 3 raised to n. Divide both sides by 3. I'm, I'm, I'm making it too much fuss. Divide both sides by 3 raised to n because it's a positive, this is a positive quantity. We can divide it. 3 raised to, 3 raised to n is a positive quantity because we know that well, even if it were, even if n were negative, 3 raised to n would still be positive. But anyway, divide both sides, and the question is: Is three more than is three is three is three more than or equal to two? Are we able to give a definitive answer to that question? That's what it boils down to. What it boils down to is: Are we able to give a definitive answer to the following question? Now, the question is: Is three greater than or equal to two? Of course, it is. Therefore, the first statement does the job quite nicely. A, D, B, C, E. First statement provides a sufficient data to be able to answer the question. Now that we've established that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now answer cannot be B, C, or E. It would have to be either A or D. Let's look at second statement. Let's look at second statement. Let's do, let's do a second statement on the top. In the second statement, they tell us that n is equal to 3. n is equal to 3. And what we are trying to figure out is this part right here. The question is, is b minus a greater than or equal to 2 raised to 3 raised to 3 minus 2 raised to 3? That's what it boils down to because we know n is equal to 3. Well. You see problem obviously. Problem is quite straightforward. We can find a numerical value here. 3 raised to 3 minus 2 raised to 3 times 2. We can figure out a numerical value here. We have a quantity here. But what about B and the A? What about, what about the values of B and A? What are their values? Without knowing the values of B and the A, we cannot answer this question. Simply knowing that N is equal to 3 does not do anything. We still need to know what B and what A is. Second statement does not do the job. The answer to this question is A. Second statement does not do the job. Second statement does not get us anywhere because simply tells us what N is. We do not know what A and B are. The answer is A. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.